Hi folks, welcome to Ochre Hamster. In this video, I'm going to do a little comparison with three generations of the Apple iPhone. So the first one on the left, this one is the iPhone 3G, came out four years ago. In the middle, we have the iPhone 4S. This came out last year, and this year's model is the iPhone 5. So with the iPhone 3G, this one had a height of 4.5 inches, a width of 2.4 inches, a depth of 0.48 inches, and a weight 4.7 ounces. Now with the iPhone 4S, there were significant improvements. For the height, it was also still 4.5 inches, but the width was shrunk a little bit as to 2.31 inches. The depth was 0.37 inches, and for the weight, it was 4.9 ounces, so the iPhone 4S was just 0.02 inches heavier than the iPhone 3G. Now with the iPhone 5, obviously with the 4-inch display now, it has a height of 4.87 inches, the width is 2.31 inches, and for the depth, it's only 0.3 inches, and it weighs 3.95 ounces. Now let's talk about screen quality. With the iPhone 3G, it had a 3.5 inch diagonal display, it was still multi-touch, but as for the resolution, it was 480 by 320 pixels at 163 PPI pixels per inch. And with the iPhone 4S, this one has a retina display. Now, it was still a 3.5 inch uh, diagonal retina display, but as for the res resolution, it went up to 960 by 640. And now it has a whopping 326 PPI pixels per inch. And with the new iPhone 5, this one has a 4 inch retina display. It has 1136 by 640 resolution and Still, the 326 PPI because this is also a retina display. So with the 4S and the 5, the quality is significantly better than the previous phones. Besides the iPhone 5 having a 4-inch display, there are additional cosmetic differences, such as the ambient light sensor. On the iPhone 4S is on top here, whereas on the iPhone 5 is just to the left of the earpiece. What's to the top of your piece on the iPhone 5 is the front-facing camera, the 1.2 megapixel camera. And the camera, the VGA camera on the iPhone 4S is to the left of your piece. If you look at the bottom of the iPhones, on the 4S, we have the microphone, the 30-pin dock, and a speaker. On the 5, we have the headphone, the microphone, the lightning port, and then the speaker. The speaker grill on the iPhone 5 is wider than the microphone. Whereas in the previous models, even if you were to throw in the 3G model, they always kept it the same dimension, symmetric. symmetric. Uh, but on the 4, 4S, the microphone is only about two-thirds of the width of the speaker. When we look at the top of both of the iPhones, on both the iPhone 4S and iPhone 5, they have the power button. But for the 4S, it has a noise sensor and the headphone port is now on top back in the older models whereas the iPhone 5 it just has the power button and nothing else when comparing the right side of the iPhones on top of the iPhone 5 you can see that the nano sim card tray is smaller than the micro sim card that the iPhone 4 4 S was using also another thing you would notice is that the band separating the antennas on the iPhone 5, the white model, the band is also white, whereas the band on the iPhone 4S is black. Now looking at the left side of the iPhone, nothing's changed. You still got your volume down, volume up, and the either vibrate or um, turn on the ringtone. Now what is a little bit different is the coloring of the antenna they, they chose. So on the iPhone 5, the metal band, the metal antenna, is lighter in color versus the iPhone 4S. In the back of the iPhone 4S and the iPhone 5, the first thing you notice is the middle finish of the iPhone 5. Whereas back with the 4 or the 4S, it was glass. Now the glass, it was shattered easily when dropped from anywhere from two feet and up. The 5, the thing is that it stains easy. It's easier to grab marks from the dirt from your hands, as you can see down here. They both have the 8 megapixel sensor, but what's between the sensor and the LED light on the iPhone 5 is another microphone to uh, detect the noise in the room. Now let's talk about camera. 
On the iPhone 3G, the back camera was only a two megapixel and you couldn't record video. There were no front facing cameras, so thus it did not support FaceTime. With the iPhone 4S, the back camera, this was eight megapixels, it had an LED flash, it, rec it could record 1080p video, and it also had image state stabilization. As for the front camera, this one was only a VGA resolution for both FaceTime, for photos, for video. And now with the iPhone 5 on the back, also a 8 megapixel camera, also has image stabilization, LED, lighting for the front camera. It's got 1.2 megapixel for photos and a 720p HD video for FaceTime. It also has the backside illumination sensor. And also another benefit about the iPhone 5 now is that when you're shooting your videos, you can be shooting your videos and taking photo shots at the same time, where you couldn't do that before with the iPhone 4S. Let's do a little comparison between the two front-facing cameras. And the easiest way to test this is with FaceTime. On the left here, this is the iPhone 4S, which has a VGA front camera. And to my right is the iPhone 5, and this one has the 1.2 megapixel, or essentially 720p resolution front camera. Uh, right away, I can see that the pixelation, there's, there's more fuzziness on this, on this side here, on the right. This is the iPhone 5 receiving the camera quality from the iPhone 4S VGA, and it is a bit fuzzier. So on this one here, this one's receiving the image from the iPhone 5's front camera, the 1.2 megapixel camera, and is definitely crisper, brighter, uh, less fuzziness around the edges. Let me just switch it up here just so I know that for sure is not the lighting in the room that's causing the the quality, any display issues and still the quality that's being received by the 4S is definitely, definitely sharper than the fuzziness of the quality on the iPhone 5 screen so iPhone 5 screen is being let's see this one's the VGA quality let's look at the battery life on both of these products here on the iPhone 4S and both the iPhone 5, they both have the eight hours of 3G talk time. And with the browsing, there was a significant improvement from the iPhone 5 compared to the iPhone 4S. On the 4S, you only had six hours of browsing on 3G, nine hours of browsing on Wi-Fi. On the LTE, just on the iPhone 5, the LTE is eight hours. The 3G is also eight hours. On a Wi-Fi is 10 hours. So essentially you get two more hours of browsing on the 3G network and one more one additional hour uh, surfing the web on the Wi-Fi network. The standby time on the 4S was 200 hours. The standby time on the iPhone 5 is 225 hours. Now let's do a little speed test between the iPhone 4S and the iPhone 5 on AT&T's network. For the 4S, I'm using the AT&T's 3G network and for the iPhone 5, I'm on their LTE server. And in both tests, I am connected to the Speed, speed test server that's in New York, New York, basically Manhattan. So let's start this. Immediately you see a significant improvement on the LTE network versus the 3G network. That's 19 megabits down for the LTE and only 8 0.33 for the 3G. Going up wasn't that great. Going up on the uh, LTE was 0.87 and going up on the 3G is 1.15. Next I'm going to test the speeds of the JavaScript on each of the versions of the iPhone. So on the 3G I'm just going to go ahead and start this. I'm going to start it again on the 4S and start on the 5. So while this is running, the iPhone 3G I do not re remember what CPU or what chipset this was using, but for the 4S, this one's using the A5, and as for the iPhone 5, this one's using the A6. The iPhone 5 has one gig of memory, whereas the 4S has 512. The 3G, well, I know it's gonna be slow. It's still running the iOS uh, 3 variant of the operating system. The 4S is still running the iOS 5, whereas the iPhone 5 is running the iOS 6, the newest version of the uh, iOS operating system. Already the iPhone 5 has finished 
Now let's see how let's see how much longer it take before the iPhone 4s completes. Well, so while the iPhone 4s is still running on the 5, it finished everything in 908.5 milliseconds. That's that's very good. That's a very good benchmark. Now for the iPhone 4, 4s, it's still chugging away. And now it finished. So with the iPhone 4S, it finished in a total of 2268.8 milliseconds, which is uh, back then, last year, it was not bad. It was, it was considerably, it was, that was considered fast last year. And for the iPhone 3G, well, I am not gonna let this one finish. This is gonna take minutes to complete. All right, for Geek, it was great to see that the iPhone 5 has higher benchmarks well, with loading JavaScripts than an iPhone 4S or the iPhone 3G. But what about real-world examples? So now I'm going to try my best to try to load the CNN homepage on the three devices at the same time. iPhone 5 loaded just a tad faster than the iPhone 4S and the iPhone 3G. Well, that's just too slow. All, remember, all this is being tested on the Wi-Fi, so the inter internet speed on all of them are identical. This time, we're going to try to load another mobile site. This one's dear to my heart. This one's awkwardhamster.com. And here we go. It, the speeds on the iPhone 4S and iPhone 5, very similar, comparable to each other. On the iPhone 3G, well, this is just too slow. Now let's try loading a website that's full of JavaScript and frames and it's just basically a standard website that has not been optimized for the mobile web browser. So here I have tech bar bargains and I'm gonna try loading it all at the same time. Here in this iPhone 5, page is up already, followed by iPhone 4S. And as for the iPhone 3G, well, probably take another minute or so. But the iPhone 4S was, just slightly behind the iPhone 5. Now I'm gonna test the boot up speed on the three devices. So I'm gonna try my best to start them all at the same time. All right, and the, as a reminder, I'm running the iOS 3 on the iPhone 3G. On uh, iPhone 4S, I'm running iOS 5. And on the iPhone 5, it's running to iOS 6 and it's up already. That was about like what, 27 seconds? It's good. Let's see how long the iOS 4 running, uh, uh, iPhone 4S running the iOS 5 will take. And uh, well, this one has the uh, A5 processor. It shouldn't take that long. All right, it's up. It took about 47. Oh wow. The 3G was just a fraction, well, not a fraction, like two seconds behind the iPhone 4S. On both of these iPhones, I have loaded Angry Birds Seasons. Now I'm gonna kick them off and I wanna see which one loads the fastest. On the iPhone 5, the splash screen has already loaded. On 4S, now it just, it's about a second, two seconds behind the iPhone 5. Another difference between the two iPhones is the map program. The icons are a bit different. That's because in the iPhone 4S, and essentially every version of the iPhone prior to the iPhone 5 was running Google Maps. Whereas on the iPhone 5 or essentially iOS 6 and higher operating system, it is running Apple's version of Maps. Right here I'm load I have New York City loaded. And what I'm gonna do is show traffic on the Google Maps and you can see the traffic information. It's pretty detailed. And I'm gonna show the traffic on the Apple Maps and you just see a couple red lines pop up. This is in New York City. There is going to be traffic everywhere. Now if I were to zoom in, I can see the traffic pattern of downtown. I zoom in on the Apple Maps, a little more de detailed down here by Church Street. Uh, and fortunately there's really nothing else up here. I'm not sure what the traffic pattern is up here now. There's not that much detailed information being displayed. Another difference between the two ver the two maps, let me just hide traffic first, is with Google Maps, we have Street View. And this is very uh, helpful, very significant 
to uh, anyone that's trying to find some place that you can get a visual idea of what the place looks like before you actually drive up to the, uh, the house number. And with the, uh, the iPhone 5, well, this one does not have Street View. Instead, what it has is this 3D icon. And you can just switch this to satellite. And so well, essentially, you're viewing this at a, at a tilt, at, a, at an angle. And you can get an idea of what the buildings look like from bird's eye view. I'm not sure how helpful this would be. Not many of us own a, a prop plane or a jet to just fly around the city or even a helicopter. Very few of us own that in, in this area. And on the satellite side for the Google Google Maps, well, it's just a straight top-down view, not an over-the-shoulder view. So I guess if I want to know what the the color of a building is, I can't really tell from the, the Google Maps, but I can tell from the Apple Maps. Really, on a scale of 1 to 10, how useful is this? I'll give it a 2. I am going to miss the, the street view uh, function on the Google Maps. And I really hope a version of the Google Maps come out, comes out for the iOS 6. Another difference is YouTube. There is no YouTube on iPhone 5. That's because with iOS 6, they removed it. In order to get YouTube, you need to download it from the App Store. With the headphone port now at the bottom of the iPhone, well, let me know if what you think. Do you like it better this way? I had a um, iPod Touch, the first generation, and at the time it was also on the bottom of the iPod. So to me, I'm okay either way. Thanks for watching this comparison video between the Apple iPhone 3G, the 4S, and the Apple iPhone 5. Now if I made a mistake on any of the specs or I didn't cover any other difference, Send me a message, post in the comments, let me know. And I'm also listen, interested in hearing from you on what iPhone you currently have and whether or not you're going to upgrade to the Apple iPhone 5. For me, I, I loved it. It's, uh, I love the LTE, I love the 4-inch screen. For you, let me know what, what, what's uh, keeping you from upgrading or if you are going to upgrade soon, great. If you're not, let me know what's stopping you. Is it the app software on the uh, Apple iPhone 5? Do you need Google Maps or something? Or is it because all of your gear right now, all your accessories, is with a 30 pin and you just don't want to spend the money and repurchase, uh, buy adapter to use it with a, this new lightning port. I think the adapter goes, when I asked the Apple store, they said it was $30 for an adapter. I think the guy would have made a mistake. It can't, $30? That's just way too much. Well, let me know what you think. Thanks for watching Walker Hamster. Please feel free to rate, comment, and subscribe.